Hello, this is Neil Paddock from HowToProgramDrums.com and we're going to be looking at how to program Impeach the President by the Honey Drippers in Acoustica Beatcraft. So first of all, what does Acoustica Beatcraft look like? And here it is. If I launch the program Oh, it's taken a long time to load. Here we go. Right. So, uh, let's give it a project title. Impeach Latest. It's going to be at 94 beats per minute, which is pretty much what the tempo of the original song is. And we're going to leave all the other bits the same. The number of measures, the number of beats per measure, the number of steps per beat because we're going to be working in 16th notes and uh, you'll see in a moment that we have 16 little buttons that we're going to be working with uh, for each row or each channel and at the bottom we have choose a drum kit to use and that's going to be no kit and we'll select that ourselves in a moment so we click OK and it just comes up with a little message to give you three choices you can add an instrument, it says, to the project's current drum kit by double-clicking the name area on the track or dragging a sample from the sample library and dropping it on a track or dragging an audio file from the Explorer pane and dropping it on a track. Now, we're going to drag a sample from the sample library in a moment. Let's click OK. Now, the window that you're looking at at the moment is divided into two screens and at the, at the top we have the pattern editor so the pattern editor is in the top window and in the bottom window which is this area here we currently have a thing called a sequencer so let's just concentrate back on the top window for a moment and you'll see that it says pattern editor here you also have the choice of sequencer which is controlled by these little tabs down the bottom so we can select sequencer kit library sample library or explorer and that will principally be for your own samples or somebody else's samples that you've collected uh, which you can use which are stored elsewhere on your hard drive now we're going to just swap that back to pattern editor at the moment and then let's take a look at the lower window I think we want that to say kit library so you can do the same thing with the tabs down the bottom um, if I click pattern editor it actually throws Explorer back up onto the top which is not really what we wanted so let's uh, get that where we want it kit library and we're going to go up to the top window and change that back to pattern editor and now we're good to go so depending on whether you've ever seen drum software before or not this might look a bit scary essentially it's quite simple we have an instrument channel and we have a number of buttons here which are divided into what they've called beats so we're saying that the first measure is of 16 beats or 16th notes and Having selected the kit library downstairs in the lower window, if we double click on acoustic kick, we can hear, we can audition what it sounds like. Sounds pretty cool. Let's go down to the acoustic snare and double click that. It's a nice snappy snare. Open hi hat. Okay, and closed hi hat. So, what we're going to do is in the first instance if I drag my acoustic kick up onto that first instrument channel using a left click and just dragging whilst holding the button down and then releasing what that does is it renames the channel acoustic kick and if I click on the green button it demonstrates to me that it successfully loaded that particular drum sample into that drum channel now it's also created a blank channel underneath so if I grab the snare left click and hold down the left mouse button and then release I get my snare and similarly it's created another open channel underneath so we can do open hi-hat in a similar fashion and closed hi-hat 
as well and um, that's that's what the open hi-hat sounds like that's what the closed hi-hat sounds like so all well and good so far now as I mentioned earlier we have 16 buttons for each channel and each one of those buttons represents a 16th note now impeach the president is in 4-4 four, four time common time which basically uses 16th notes and a lot of the music that we'll be looking at to start with will use these 16ths. If we were doing funny time signatures like 5-4 or 7-4 then you'd have a different number of buttons but we're just going to be concentrating on 16ths to keep it simple and most drum machines that you'll find certainly in software form will tend to have 16 buttons so this is a good place to start. Okay now it's also worth remembering that when you listen to an acoustic snare drum uh, that it will play on the off beat or the back beat as it's known which are beats 5 and 13 so when we do our first programming we can go to the acoustic snare channel and select the fifth one along and the thirteenth button along which happen to coincide with counting two and four when we count a standard pattern of four beats so we count one two three four and those beats those buttons that happen to be five and thirteen will always correspond to counting two and four let me show you what I mean if we just press play now one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Let's add our hi hat. And the hi hat is done in eighth notes or quavers. And we tend to use odd numbers. And I'm basically going to click these buttons all the way across, but only using the odd numbers. So we're going one, three, five, seven, nine, eleven, thirteen, fifteen for now so um, if I was to solo the hi-hat track we can hear what that sounds like on its own and the way we count that incidentally would be 1 and 2 and 3 and 4 and 1 and 2 and 3 and 4 and so our quavers or eighth notes give us 1 and 2 and so each of the second notes is represented by a little AND sign, a little ampersand. Let's bring in the acoustic snare and see how that fits in with the pattern. It starts with a bass drum on the first measure of beat 1. I also happen to know through trial and error that it, um, it finishes on number 15. So, shall we play that? We'll unsolo everything so that it all plays together. Let's see what we've got so far. So, what we need to now overlay is um, dum da da dum dum da dum dum da da dum dum da. So, how do we do a da dum dum? Shall we see if that does the trick? And he's got it right! How would we explain that in musical terms? Well, we do need to use our little sixteenth notes for this, actually, because the, the reason for that is that this particular note, the one that falls on uh, button number eight, um, is a sixteenth and all the others effectively are quavers. A sixteenth is a semi-quaver actually, so I'll show you a little graphic of one of those. So that's our pattern. Now there's, there's a, one other change we need to make, which is we need to put in an open hi-hat and we need to put that in on number 11. So if I click once, I put in my open hi-hat and then I'll take out by clicking twice in fact um, 
I'll take out my closed hi-hat and that should now be the finished pattern. There's just one more thing I wanted to show you here and um, basically what that's to do with is being able to render a file. Now what do we mean by rendering? It's actually the process of creating an audio file from our programmed beats. So let's see what happens. Okay so that's what we've got so far. Now what we want to be able to do is play that on a CD player or put it onto another track so that we can add instruments onto the top and the process that we use for that is called rendering it's basically creating a WAV file that's one of those files with .wav on the end we can then go on and convert that file to things like mp3s later on if we want to okay so here's how we do it, it's quite simple there's a number of ways you can do it in fact you can click on this button here the render button render audio or you can go to the normal menu file render pattern let's do that so I'm going to use some render settings here we've got choices we can do this directly as an mp3 if we want or a WMA which will play in Windows Media Player there's even OG files as well which can be used in uh, various other uh, bits of software but we're going to concentrate on a WAV file here WAV we're also going to wrap audio tails and you'll see why uh, we're going to do that in a second so we hit render um, this is actually going to save to my desktop so I'm going to type in impeach uh, pattern 1 I suppose and when I press save it's going to ask me to put in some other gubbins as well but we're not going to be too bothered about that um, you might want to if you build up a library of clips but for now we're just going to click go so that's creating a stereo pattern now at the same time it creates the audio file it's going to by default in my window settings I've got it to come up with um, gold wave so when it opens the file after it's rendered it it opens in something called gold wave um, which I have a license for which is an excellent little program I'm currently using gold wave version 5.58 and uh, why am I using that? Well, first of all, this is what our waveform looks like and we can't, as far as I'm aware at the moment, we can't see that directly at least as easily within Beatcraft itself. So um, Gold Wave is quite an elegant way of showing us what the waveform looks like. Additionally, we can loop it. So there's quite a simple process. We go over to the play button, we right click on the play button and pop down to where it says loop and you see now there's a little circle that's appeared around the play button and that should mean that when I press play it will loop and it will loop for as long as we want it to so there we go that's how to do it and that's how to create a WAV file um, or render a WAV file having programmed it in Acoustica Beatcraft. This is Neil Paddock from How to Program Drums. Thanks very much for listening, and I look forward to uh, seeing you again on the next video very soon. Bye for now.